Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Sandworld, like always, and today we are going to be making a new track for the Let's um, Play Ableton Live series. Uh, so I've chosen the liberty of starting off with Serum this time. I always like to start with different synths. I feel like it really inspires uh, me to make something new, especially when I have like a shit ton of new presets. Sometimes I like to go through them. Now, personally, me, um, I teach a lot of sound design on my YouTube channel, but whenever it comes to making music, you know, for me as a ho as a hobby, I like to use presets because it makes this workflow help a lot more faster. And a lot of the times me scrolling through presets just tends to inspire something to come out. It might be just one sound. It might be multiple sounds. So for me, um, presets are very, very important. And I always tend to use the ones I've made. I always make sound banks that I sell for you guys, as you guys have seen um, over the past year. And I tend to use those a lot. I usually like having the sounds made already helps a lot. So if some of you guys can't come up with music on the spot, why not make sounds for the day and then save a, a sound bank of all your favorite ones. And then when you like start on the track, maybe you can go in and be like, OK, you know, I'm going to go try and find something that inspires me. So right now we're going to start with this lead just because I kind of wanted to make something melodic. Now, I don't know what we're going to go leaning towards, so we'll see. But right now, let's just jam out. We're in the scale of A minor for this. Very simple, uh, it's Lee called Don't Stop the Hardwell. sound where I can kind of play chords at the bottom to see if that would work actually. <laughs> Let's try putting the MIDI in for that, and then from there we can maybe keep the chords, keep the melody. Now, I don't like making happy melodies. I've never been the type to do that, so if the happy melody sounds good, I'll probably think it sucks and probably won't make it, so let's see. <laughs> Okay, so I like the melody. It's going to be very progressive. This lead's not going to work, obviously, for it, but it helps. Um, usually, I tend to like, get really big super saws whenever I come to make a melody that can play in poly, which means just multiple notes at the time, because that way I can kind of play the chords at the same time. It's like playing a piano. You know, you're playing the, the bottom note while you're playing the top melody, you know, whatever it might be. So let's try this. Let's change this um, sound to maybe a pad. Bye. <laughs> 
get the melody idea out and then I'm gonna start with like the whole kind of like intro to it because right now I was playing that because that was what was in my head so in my head I'm already going like okay in the break it's gonna kind of tease the melody like this so because that sounds catchy to me Now, the melody itself, if you were to like kind of do this in the theory way, and a lot of people always kind of come at me like, especially music theory people, people that study musical composition, I always teach stuff the way that I learned it and the way that it makes sense to me and the way, you know, that I get it. And I feel like this is one of the things that works for me. A lot of people are going to be like, nah, like you can't do that, blah, 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 like what the fuck. But for me, it works. So one of the things is if I ever have this catchy thing like this, <laughs> To me, that sounds really catchy, and I can't find a variation to it. One of the things that you can do is keep the transition notes. And what I mean by transitional notes, and again, this might not be music theory. It might be. I don't know. I didn't study music theory. But this works for me, and this is how I think of it. So there's always going to be notes that are going to be like the main portion of the melody, you know. And then there's going to be transition notes that happen in order for you to go from this note to this note. Here, in order for me to go from G to C, I think adding a B makes it a lot more catchier. And I would call this a transition note because it's not around for so long. And it's just there for me to go da, da, da. It kind of leads you into the next note. So for me, I would leave this the same and I would change just this. And I would go with something that's harmonic to that. And I've talked about the key of three. And what I mean by this is you count the note you're on and then you count up or down the scale and then you're going to count so the scale of a minor for us it's going to be the a the b the c the the d uh the e the f and so forth it's pretty much all the white keys i believe let me see So yeah, it's pretty much all the white keys, similar to the C major scale. It's just that you start at a different point. So this is very simple here, and we can go with the E, which is the third. We count the C, that's one, two, and then three. So, so you guys can see it works, but I think moving that transitional to here would work better. Okay, I think maybe D. So now we just need to find a melody for here. solution and that would go at the end of the, the break so then it would go and then you can have your build up dun, 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 or the drop whichever it comes so we're gonna go with this all right so that works i like the pad in the back i just don't like kind of like the way it kind of lags a bit so i'm gonna make the attack maybe a 
shallow flow, maybe a little bit more like here. <laughs> Now, as many of you guys know, the new Cashmere sample pack is out, so I'm sure everyone's going to be using it, but I don't give a fuck. Usually, the samples he makes are very cool because he gets, like, help from sound designers um, to make them, so I'm sure it's... I haven't really checked it out, so we're going to go with it. I think it's going to be cool. So, it's kind of like a first impression as well. <laughs> All right, so um, I was looking at some of the vocals, I think, which were cool, but I just want something atmospheric. We're in the key of A. auto pan to the vocals and then what we're gonna do is also kind of reverb them out now I'm gonna reverb in the channel just because I want this effect which is gonna make it sound a little bit more atmospheric as you guys can see it's more atmospheric iffy on that last portion of the melody so for the sake of this video we're just gonna leave it the same as here just because I don't want to drag the video along with trying to find the perfect melody for that I feel like this needs kind of like something in the background like another melody or an arp so we're gonna do that Now a pad, the ARP, I'm going to create it via using the notes that comes from the chords. We want this to be kind of stable throughout the whole thing. And what that means is the notes that are playing in the chords, a.k.a. my bottom note right now, are the notes that you want mostly in your ARPs or you want your ARPs to start with. That's going to make them sound very stable. And what that means, it's going to make them sound safe. Now stable can be very predictable predictable so that's the only bad thing about it but most of Avicii stuff like his melodies are pretty much stable I've never heard any kind of like any of his melodies that are very um, unstable which means that the notes mainly you're playing on part of the chord so it kind of sounds a little bit off key sometimes but that helps create tension at times if you guys have ever seen like movies cymat um, cinematic movies and I was about to say cymatics <laughs> man that subliminal marketing that they have man all right so we're gonna go with serum again it's probably going to be all serum project. We're going to go into the electronic Swiss knife. And if he, I don't know if there's any plugs. Oh, yeah, there's plugs here. We're going to put an arpeggiator. Now, I'm going to make the chords for this, which would be, you know, the thirds of it all. Some. There might be other variations that you can do, like fourth sustain and all that, but I'm going with the more simpler one, not to overcomplicate things. So we're going to move this up an octave. itself is wide but I think it can work in mono and we're gonna make the art be uh, more wide so we're gonna make use an s1 just to kind of make this lead more monoish and then we're gonna get the arp and just make the arp a little bit more wider Let's 
So I think here's where the buildup will happen, and then here's where the drop should happen. Um, if we're doing here, so it would be one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it would drop at 145, around 115. Alright, let's see if Kashmir made any more fills, and yep, he did. I just need a simple one like this. We're gonna leave the, the voice on the drop, but this time it's gonna get heavily sidechained and that's gonna give us a lot of atmosphere um, that's needed for these type of drops so it doesn't sound so plain. Now we are gonna work on the build later, but what we're gonna do right now, because at any moment I might have to go out and do something. I don't know what time though. Have to go to Nordstrom and return some stuff, but um, that's gonna be the end of the video when that happens, so we'll see. <laughs> Now, as you guys can see, samples make it heavily easy to make a song because I don't have to worry about making my own snare builds. Now, some people are going to be like, oh, you're a fucking lazy ass motherfucker. Now, I do make my own drum loops now, but for the sake again for this video, I'm not going to do it. If you guys want to see me making drum loops, you guys can see the first Let's Play episode. I made them myself. Now, I can make the drum loops for this. I just think it takes too much time and I want to get to the to the good stuff, like which is kind of the theory behind the whole arrangement of a song and what needs to be in the drop and what doesn't and so forth, that kind of stuff. So once we have here, we need a kick. The kick needs to be in the, in the key of our song or in the key of our bass. Generally in tune, you're not gonna pick a kick a key, a kick that's G sharp if you're in the key of G. It will sound very off tune, um, but if you're in G, you can play like a kick that's an A sharp or a kick that is, I'm gonna assume, I think D sharp because D sharp is the, the third of D sharp is gonna be a G. So if your bass is playing at G, a uh, kick in D sharp will work heavily well as well. Now it totally depends up to you. Some people like to stay in key, so it's up to you. For this, I'm gonna find a kick in A, which I'm sure he has provided. Now we need a, a kick like that. Since I said the only kicks he provided, we'll go with this one. We're gonna make this kick shorter because it's not gonna work with what I'm gonna do, which is gonna make a big bass that's heavily sustained. All right, now we're gonna pick our bass for the drop, which is gonna go with the pad bass. Sorry, the pad. It's literally gonna be the same programming. For this, you can pick a rolling bass or a sustained bass. Totally up to you. pick the bass it can't be that fucking Base house in this pack. <laughs> All right, so.
As you guys can see, I got sent a Pokemon. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Now, I want this to be in mono, the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the base in mono. And that's going to give me the sound. in here. I'm going to make a dedicated sub. Usually it's good to separate the, the bass away from its sub. This is a lot more cleaner. I've talked about it in so many of my videos and yet people still forget. Mainly you just want a dedicated sub because now I can saturate the bass, set, distort it and do all sorts of things boost without altering any of the low end which is again a very sensitive part of dance music now my initial bass that I have here can get pretty much um, get the low end removed from it Ups, long sweep, hopefully white noise.
as you guys can see working. I'm debating whether to put OT OTT or saturate this because I cannot hear it popping out and I kind of want this to... It's covering the fucking um, lead so the lead I know is mono so if I do some mid side here my mono signal I can just reduce here where it's like a pitch down on the voice So that's where it's gonna go. We're gonna put the kick up here. Now we're gonna get some drum loops. Let's call it tops. Um, and we'll see if we need to add claps and all that other stuff. But first we need to check them out because uh, who knows. solution which will be either high or low A it's up to you so here I'm thinking about adding a piano and it's gonna be uh, contact. Actually, you know what? Let's go with the Ableton one. Actually, you know, even though it might not sound as good. All right, guys. All right, so someone's home. That means that video is about to be done. So I'm just gonna do this piano part, and then I'm gonna have to go, guys. So um, next episode, we'll probably keep working on this, obviously. So let's just make the piano here real fast. We're gonna. It's gonna derive from the ARP, obviously, because that's. That's going to be our pretty much our generic ass chords. Are they going to get filtered in? 
like this. back in here it's gonna be like a kind of like not so much of a like progressive house layout I guess I'm just going with the flow of what's in my head so I might have had like I heard the kick coming in here in the ARP transition into that build that we had here stop it here but you guys can see the general layout of it the general idea um it needs a lot more work in the sense that the idea is almost done but it needs like little intricate details and that's what we're going to be working on next time we're going to be working on intro outro and hopefully finishing the track up very very simple as you guys can see and um even the track itself if you hear it without a master it sounds heavily heavily well mainly because the sounds that were used in the video are not shitty sounds a lot of the sounds already sound good up to par we can add more layers but that's gonna make it more awful um, so don't get into that mentality that if your sounds don't sound as big it's because you need more layers sometimes it's because you just chose a shitty sample pa sound bank or shitty preset and you know sometimes it might be, even be my own sounds that sound shitty sometimes because I'm not gonna lie to you guys when I make a sound bank I try to make really good sounds but sometimes you get like filler sounds which is like when you buy an album you have those songs that are really fucking good and then you have those sounds that are more like eh, they're okay you know so yeah you know that's the same thing that happens with sound banks i guess um anyways guys thanks for tuning in and i'll see you guys next time hopefully you guys enjoy these series and hit like follow comment subscribe love me give me some money peace out